Hey guys, Steve Hoff, stevehoffphoto.com. Welcome back to the channel. I wanna update you guys on the Panasonic S1. I've done a video or two about it before using it with uh, M-mount lenses and stuff like that. But I posted my full review of it over at stevehoffphoto.com a few days ago. So you can see the full written review, click the images, check them out, see the samples uh, on your computer, on your tablet, on your phone, however you're browsing it. 11 years old, that website now, hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of reviews over the years. So check that out. I'll put the link below in the description to that review. Listen to how smooth this shutter sounds, ready? I love the S1. Panasonic to me has hit it out of the park with this camera and it's the first camera in a long time that really is exciting me. It's getting me excited. It's getting my juices pumping. It's motivating me to go out and use it. But that's me. It's a personal thing because A, it's doing everything that I need it to do and it has everything I want in a full frame format camera. One, amazing handling and build quality. It has some weather sealing, but it feels great in the hand. This is a camera you will not need a grip with because it fits your hand perfectly. You're not gonna have those fingers hanging off the bottom as you do with some smaller cameras. All the controls are in a place where you expect them to be. The menus are on the simple side, though not as simple as Leica, but they're pretty simple menus, pretty intuitive menus, and they don't get too crazy. So handling ergonomics, usability is a dream. Bam. Two, the five axis image stabilization is really useful for photos and especially for video. Now the five axis does work with my adapted M mount lenses, whether I'm shooting a photo or shooting videos. So the adapted lenses do work with five axis image stabilization and it's really, really useful for video. This is implemented really well. Some cameras that have five axis are not implemented nearly as well as the S1. This is kind of like the GH5 where they had really good five axis image stabilization. Three, that EVF. The EVF is beautiful. It's the best in the world as of May 2019. You're not going to get a better electronic viewfinder in any camera. It's huge, it's big. It's You look through that big porthole and you can see details, you can focus without peaking or without blowing it up if you're using a manual focus lens. So I love it for that. The way it handles adapted lenses is great. I shoot Voigtlander M-Glass because Voigtlander is making some amazing lenses these days. Uh, the 51.2, the 41.2, the 50 F3.5, the 35 F1.2, the 21 F1.8. These are all amazing lenses, the 75 F1.8. They're jewel-like lenses. They feel just as nice as Leica glass, but they come in at like one eighth of the cost sometimes. And via an adapter, I use the Nova Flex uh, Leica M to L adapter. It's the sweet spot in the adapters, I think. And you put these lenses on and the camera feels smaller. It feels like it's made for those lenses and they render beautifully on the camera. I love shooting these manual focus lenses. Uh, and this is the best camera that I have found for that implementation. I also like the native glass. Now with this camera, you have lenses from Panasonic, you have lenses from Leica, and you have upcoming lenses from Sigma, all being made for the S1. You will have full autofocus, of course. And I have the 24 to 105, and it is lovely. It's actually a really nice lens. It's not as nice as the Leica 24 to 90 L mount, but it's less expensive and lighter, and it's still really, really good. So for video, the native lens works great. You can also use those manual lenses, as I mentioned, because the five axis will work with those. Buttery smooth. So this is an all out versatile camera. Next, the battery. It's using a battery, a variant of the Leica S, the medium format camera from Leica. It's big, it's powerful, and so far, I've had this camera since it came out, and I've only had to charge the battery twice. I'm on my second charge now, um, so the battery for me has lasted a long, long time. The battery power is wonderful. The sensor is amazing. This 24 megapixel sensor blew me away because it's crisp, it's detailed, the color is really, really nice. There's no softness or mushiness to it, 
and the low light capabilities are absolutely insane. I can shoot this camera in low light up to ISO 51200 and have results I like. If you wanna shoot some arty nighttime street scenes, jack it up to 51200, jack it up to 40,000, put it to black and white, and right out of the camera, you're gonna get some amazing film-like images that look like ISO 3200 film did. Uh, those of you who used to shoot film or still do. So this is a low light monster of a camera. Not only does it have great low light, this sensor, it has really good dynamic range. It might not have the best in the world dynamic range, but it's better than the Canon uh, EOS R without question. It's better than my Leica SL was. And there's no highlights that I've ever blown using this camera. And it also, you can bring out those shadows. So the dynamic range is top notch. This sensor is a winner all the way around. In fact, uh, the rendering and color I'm seeing in the dynamic range and, and low light ability, this is like my favorite sensor ever in a 35 millimeter camera. Now, what are the downsides of the S1? Um, for some, they're gonna say it's too big, right? Cause it is bigger than the little Sony's, it's bigger than the little Nikon Z, um, but we're so used to those small cameras now that this feels like a beast in the hand to some. Ah, let's take a flashback look at the Sony NEX5. Remember when mirrorless cameras were this tiny? In fact, looking back now, this was too tiny, too small for our hands. And now cameras like the S1 fit oh so perfectly. Lenses, these lenses from Leica, these L-mount lenses are pretty big and heavy. So if you're out shooting with those big zooms, it's going to be a big camera system without question. So if you don't like that bigger size, then it's already a non-starter. But I urge you to try those small adapted lenses with it, M-mount lenses from any manufacturer, which you can get for as little as $300 on Amazon, like that 7 Artisans 51.1. Not the best lens in the world, but it's still a creative artsy lens. Plop that on with an adapter and you have a smaller lightweight kit that still feels amazing in the hand due to the way that grip is made. The S1 has one of the best grips I've ever felt in a camera. And if you're saying you're too excited, Steve, for this camera, you're right. I am excited for this camera. Again, it's personal because it's doing everything that I need it to do. Um, there's nothing that it has failed me on. Now video, uh, it doesn't have the pro video specs of something like the GH5 or GH5S but there are improvements coming via a paid firmware upgrade for those who want it, but you don't need it unless you're just really picky and must have these extra specs. I shot this, uh, the S1 uh, at 1080p, I tested it at 4K, and not only did the footage look good at 4K, it looked fantastic at 1080, really blowing my EOS R away at 1080, and the focus was way better than I thought using the 24 to 105. Um, it locked focus, it kept focus, way better than the GH5 or GH5S. Panasonic has improved the focus, though don't expect the focus of a Sony A9 or an EOS R even. The EOS R's strong point is that dual pixel autofocus. So video, it looks great as is coming out of the camera unless you need it for pro work. If you need it for pro work, don't buy the S1 for pro video work, right? But for YouTube, for casual stuff, it is primo, it looks fantastic. There's two card slots. So you have an SD card slot and you have an XQD slot. So a lot of cameras that came out recently took some flack because they only had one card slot. Well, this one has two. Um, and it has the faster, nicer XQD format as well as the SD format. Truth be told, I've only got an SD loaded in there and I haven't been worried about it. The camera has been doing wonderful. This is a camera that's very versatile, very feature packed, but it's not bloated with things we don't need, right? It does have face detect, it does have eye detect, it has those things that many of us like and want. It has the mic input, it has everything one could need for a photo tool or a casual video tool. But the S1 does not have a flip out screen. It has an articulating screen that comes out this way. But I have found the S1 to be amazing. Um, I pre-ordered mine, it arrived, and I wasn't sure about it the first couple days, but the more I used it and the more I realized this is offering everything that I've been looking for for years, 
So far, it is my camera of the year for 2019. And that's, that's my pick, right? So it might not fit for you, but it really fits for me. If you're looking for a camera that is 35 millimeter full frame and you're looking at Sony, Canon, Nikon, be sure to look at the S1. Go to your local store, try it out, hold it rented if you can for a couple of days. And I urge anyone who wants to try something really cool and unique, uh, slap on an M mount lens of any brand. You can even get a cheap adapter to try it out. Opens up your creativity when you're manually focusing a shot because when you nail that shot, you're gonna say, I got that, the camera didn't get it. So that's what's really cool about this camera. You can use any, almost any lens on it via an adapter and it adapts these lenses really well. The images look great. Uh, Canon lenses, I shoot the 51.2 EF on the S1 and it does great. Now I did a comparison against the Sony a7S II for low light, high ISO shooting. Now I have the Voigtlander 50 F1.2 FE mount uh, for Sony, this lens is made just for Sony. It's beautiful. It's the same formula as the 50 F12 M mount that I love so much. But if you're a Sony user, you can now get that lens uh, made by Voigtlander for your Sony. Mine came from CameraQuest.com. But I tested them side by side at night. ISO was set the same, but I let each camera meter the scene how they would meter it because that's how we use the cameras in the real world. In the real world, we're not out there shooting, trying to match it to another camera. So I shot the Sony, um, let it meter for the scene, and I shot the Panasonic and let it meter for the scene to see what we get out of each camera. And lo and behold, I preferred the Panasonic shots every single time over the Sony a7S II. So I would say that the Panasonic S1 is truly the new king of low light but that Sony is four years old and I expect Sony's going to come out with an A7S III this year for sure. I think they have to, and I expect that to be just mind-blowingly good. So that was my follow-up update review to the Panasonic S1. If you missed my last video on it, uh, I'll put it on the end screen here if you missed it. But the S1 is highly recommended as a uh, solution if you're looking for a 35 millimeter full frame format. Uh, this camera tech keeps getting better, but this one here does everything I need it to, and I love it. If you like my videos here, thumbs up and subscribe. If you wanna read reviews and check out the photos on your computer or laptop or tablet or phone, go to stephaphoto.com. Thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.